Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and joined with my co-host for the second day of theCUBE's program, Jim Kobielis. Really excited to have not only the founder of Docker, uh, Solomon Hikes, he's also the CTO, Chief Product Officer, uh, did some keynotes here, you know, all over the place. So Solomon, thank you so much, thanks for having us. Uh, congratulations on all the progress, and uh, thank welcome you. back to theCUBE. Thanks a lot, it's a lot of fun. All right, so, you know, so many things uh, to talk about, but l l let's start with you. How you doing, you know? <laughs> uh, I I'm sure, you know, there's so much that went into the, the, this week. You know, what are you most proud of? Uh, what are you most excited about these days? Boy, yeah, uh, where to start? I mean, the, the cool thing for me about DockerCon is I focus on the keynote, right? We just package up a nice story, try to explain what we're doing, where we're going, and that's a pretty massive team effort. I think it's 30 of us for months preparing, you know, deciding what we want to talk about, working on demos, pulling all-nighters, so it's just really fun to see uh, a keynote go from nothing to a really nice, uh, fun story. And then I get to show up and discover all the other cool stuff. So I'm like everyone else. I just marvel at the you know the organization, the the crowd, the energy. I just I'm a I'm a happy camper right now. Yeah. So th th it's interesting. Some of the dynamics in the industry is to you know okay, what's the important part? Who contributes to what? What fits yeah. where? Two years ago, we kind of had you know the the hugging out as to you know the runtime uh, <laughs> and you know yeah. ha had the op the open source foundation step in. Uh, you know, big thing at the keynote yesterday. Uh, you know, two, two big things. It was a Moby Project and, and Linux Kit. C can you maybe unpack for our audience a little bit? You know, what is Docker the company? What's the open source? Who are you know some of the main players? And you know, it, it was the whole keynote, so we don't have time to get into sure. it. But you know, <laughs> what what's real and, and what, what what's yeah. there? Yeah. Um, so you're right. That was the big announcement, the Moby Project. So, um, you know, the the. Basically, in a nutshell, we 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 launched Docker and and we made it a product and an open source project all rolled into one. We just kind of adopted this hybrid model of building a product that would just help people be more efficient, developers and ops, and at the same time, we would develop that in the open, and that really helped us. And it 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 participated in the the appearance of this just huge ecosystem, um, and it was it was a big decision for us. And over time, both grew. Docker grew as a product, uh, and it grew as an open source project. And so over time we had to adapt to that growth. And on the open source side, that meant gradually spinning out smaller projects as, out of the main one. So now we have a, a dozens of projects, literally. We've got Container D, we've got Swarm Kit, we've got Infer Kit, we've got all these components. And each of those is a project, then we integrate them. And um, what we're doing now is we're completing that transformation uh, and making sure there is a place for open source collaboration, free for all, uh, openness, modularity, try new things, move fast, break things maybe, and, uh, and then there's the product that integrates, takes the best parts, uh, integrates them together, makes sure they, they're tested, they're solid, and, and then ships that to developers and customers. So basically we're saying Moby is for open source collaboration, it's, it's our project, and all of it. And Docker is the product that integrates that, uh, that open, uh, project into something that people can consume that's simple. So it's two mutually, it's two complementary uh, parts to our platform. Uh, and, and could you talk a little bit about the, there's kind of that composable nature of what you're building there. There's what yeah. Docker will build from it, and I think you've got a couple of examples of some of your partners, uh, what's going to happen in the cloud, what's going to happen yeah. in some of these other, you know, walk us through one of those. Yeah, so the, the, the everything about Docker is modular. So really, if you, if you install Docker for your favorite platform, whether it's the Mac, you know, uh, Windows, your favorite cloud provider, et cetera, a Linux server, you're actually installing a product that's a, an assembly of lots of components. And like I said, these components are developed in the open and then they're assembled. Uh, and, and now with the Moby project, there's a place to uh, assemble in the open, start the assembly in the open, so that other companies, a broader ecosystem can collaborate in, in the assembly and kind of experiment with how things fit together. The really cool thing about that is it makes it makes it way easier to port the platform, to expand it and to customize it. So if you're if you're a cloud provider and you see all the pieces and you think, well I could optimize that, I could I could add a little bit of magic to make it work even better in my cloud or in my hardware. Um, 
then you can do that in the open. You can, you can do that with the community, and then you can partner with Docker to test it and certify it and, and distribute it as an easy to use product. So everything can go faster. Yeah, so you mentioned open a yeah. lot there. Um, does that mean that Docker is now closed? You know, <laughs> how, how, you know there's certain people that are very dogmatic uh, when it comes to open yeah. source, so, so maybe you can parse that for us. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. I think it's the same people that were complaining before that we were confusing our product and, and open project. And, and so, the, the, um, we think of ourselves as having a lot to learn, and uh, there's an ecosystem that's made of a lot of people and uh, companies and projects that have, that have had a lot of experience with openness in the past, so we spend most of our time listening, figuring out what the next step should be, and then taking that next step. So people told us, uh, clarify the relative place of open source collaboration and your product, and that's what we did. Now I'm sure someone's going to say, well, uh, I, I preferred it before. Well, you know, we just have to at some point choose. So the key thing to remember is Docker does everything in the open and then integrates it into a product that you can use. And if you don't like the product, if you want an alternative, then you still have all the pieces in the open right now. So I would say no. Not only is Docker not going closed, we're actually accelerating the rate at which we're opening up stuff. Yeah, I mean, personally, I felt it was a nice maturation of what you'd done before, which was, you know, batteries are included but swappable. Yeah. Um, you know, but we, we've kind of taken the next step. It reminds me of like, you know, those cool little science kits my kids get. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, okay, I could pre-build it, or I can do it, or I can. That's right. Do some other. Yeah, things, that's a, so. That's a good. You know, we've used that that tagline. It used to be, Docker is batteries included but swappable, and you can make other batteries, and we'll we'll swap them into the product. We'll decide what's what's in there. Uh, now everyone can do the swapping. You know, it's just a, it's a big free-for-all. Um, and honestly, it's fun to watch, right? Is there any piece of Docker, the project, outside of core Docker, that Docker, the company, will refrain from building, will rely on ISVs to build, or will Docker, the company, get involved, or reserve for itself the uh, uh, latitude to get involved in, in development mm. of, you know, more peripheral pieces of the overall project right. going forward. Yeah, so we, we spend a lot of time thinking about that. Yeah. And honestly, um, you know, there's so many different constraints. We've just decided we're going to follow um, follow the users, follow the customers. So we just want a platform that works and solve solves people's problems. And that's that's the starting point. And from there, we work out the implementation details. Mm -hmm what technology to use, the order in which to build things, and also what makes more sense in the core platform and what makes more sense as, a, as an add-on. So it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. Is there a grand vision document or functional service layered architecture that all of these components of the project are, are implementing or enabling? I mean, in other words, will Docker as a project ever be complete or is it <laughs> com will it always be open-ended? Will it constantly evolve and broaden or possibly? Broad and in yeah. scope, on, you know, continuously, indefinitely. Well, I think if you look at the the Moby <laughs> project on the one side, with, the, with experimentations and all the all the building blocks, I think that's going to just continuously expand. Yeah. And, and really, openness is all about scale. Yeah. There's only so much one company can build on their own. But if you really, if you show the ecosystem you're serious about really welcoming everybody and allowing for different opinions and approaches, then honestly, I think there's no limit to how large that project can scale. I think, I think Moby can go into tens of thousands of contributors as, as open source becomes easier and more accessible, which we're really working on. I think it could go into hundreds of thousands. That's going to take a while. So that will, I think, never end growing. I think Docker, the product, the company, um, the reason we've been so successful is that we've we've been uh, well at least we've worked really hard to focus and be disciplined in what problems we want to solve. So it's a more iterative iterative approach. We would rather solve less problems, but solve them really really well. So that if you're using Docker for developing or going to production, uh, you're really delighted. They just every detail kind of fits together. So um, you know there's a roadmap of course. We're going to do more and more, but we're, we're we don't want to rush doing trying to do everything. Uh, Solomon, you know. Great progress on all of these pieces. So uh, I, I've got the tough one for you. Uh, okay. You know, in, in the last year or so, Kubernetes has really, you know, exploded out there. You know, lots of your ecosystem is heavily using it. Um, is it that 
Docker Swarm and Kubernetes will you know, just be options out there. I look at Microsoft Azure, and they're very supportive of both mm -hmm. initiatives. Many of your partners are there. How should, you know, how do you guys look at that dynamic, and uh, you know, how, how would you like people to think of that going forward? Yeah, um, so I think it's actually, you, it's a great case study of um, why we're transitioning to this open project model with Mobi. Uh, the whole point is that at any given time, Docker, the product, will not be using all of the building blocks out there. It's just not possible, there's too many permutations. So we have to choose, right? And, and one of these building blocks is orchestration. And a year ago, when we decided to build an orchestration, we had really specific uh, opinions on what it should look like uh, as product builders. And we looked around and we decided, okay, it needs to be a new kind of a building block. So we built swarm kits for our own use, and we integrated it. And, and now that there's an open project for collaboration, we're throwing SwarmKit in there so that everyone can modify it, extend it, and also replace it with something else. So I think the big change now is if you look at something like Kubernetes or you know, Rocket as a container on time, or you know, honestly I could make a, a super long list of all the components out there that are really cool and we don't use in Docker, now you can combine them all in, in Mobi, in custom assemblies. And we actually demoed that on stage yesterday. We showed taking some pieces from Docker and some pieces, and, and taking Kubernetes as a piece and like plugging it together and saying, look, there you go, weekend project. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of convergence and um, reuse of ideas and codes, especially in the orchestration piece. I think over time, the differences between Kubernetes, SwarmKit, and others will really diminish and um, you know, we'll just integrate the bits and pieces that make most sense. So I don't really think of Kubernetes as um, you know, uh, an, um, a competitor or a problem. I think of it as another cool component in the, in the Mobi ecosystem. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely, and I tell you, the Kubernetes community is just so thrilled that ContainerD is now open source. Yeah. It, it really kind of solves that issue, and really, it hasn't been something I've heard a lot. Coming into the show, it was one of the themes we wanted to look at, and it hasn't been something that is like, oh boy, you know, fight, yeah. war, anything like that, which is, hey, congrats on that. So, I, I want to come back, to turn back to, you know, your roots there, you know, when I think about, you know, dot .cloud, you know, to Docker, it was a lot about the application modernization. Um, fast forward today, and I mean, Ben's up on stage talking of the journey. How do we take your, you know, legacy applications yep. and wrap them in? What do you think about that that kind of, you know, progression? You know, we, we kind of like that that spectrum out there to help customers at least partially and be able to make changes. But I can't imagine that's when when you started Docker that that was one of the use cases that you really thought you'd use. So, what what surprised you? What's changed yeah. in how you build things? What do you see from customers? So actually. Um, you'll find this surprising, but this actually was a use case that we had in mind from the very beginning. Okay. And I think that was uh, lost in the noise for the first few years in the life of Docker because yeah. it became this exciting oh, come new on, thing. Cloud native, cloud native. Cloud, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I, you know, Docker is a huge developer community now and, and we spend a lot of time making it great for devs. The truth is, I'm, I used to be a sysadmin, I used to be on call, I'm an ops guy first. And we learned how to help developers. Developers are the customer. And, but Docker came out of our ops roots, and then it evolved to help the developers. And that's something that's now lost in the noise of history. <laughs> um, and it's so, it's a really pragmatic uh, tool, and, and it's built to, to solve real problems. And one design uh, opinion we baked in from the beginning is that it has to allow you to, go, to do things incrementally. If Docker forces you to throw away what you have, just to get the benefits, then, then we screwed up. The whole point is that Docker can adapt to what you're doing. So for example, uh, you'll see a lot of details in how Docker's designed to allow for stateful applications to run in there, to allow for your own network model to fit. Uh, before Docker, uh, all, the, all the containerized solutions, all the paths, required you to change your app. Even things like port discovery, you had to adopt, uh, you had to change the source code. And, the, the, um, and, and Docker did not require that. It gives you extra things you can do if you want to go further, but the starting point is incremental. And honestly, I'm really glad that now that's resonating. Uh, we're reaching that point in the community where there's a lot of people using Docker interested in that. Because for a few years I was worried that uh, that would be uh, missed in the noise of early adopters that don't mind rewriting everything. 
you know, so, so really from the beginning, Docker was not just for cloud native, microservices, 12 factor, et cetera. So I'm personally, as a designer of products, as a pragmatist, I'm, I'm just happy that we're there. Uh, how do you see Docker evolving to support more complex uh, orchestrations for data? Um, you know, in other words, for like hybrid data cloud environments, pri private and public. You got the likes of Microsoft and Oracle and IBM as partners and so forth, and they have these complex scenarios now. Their customers, or, you know, petabyte scale and so forth. Where do you see that going? The data, the persistence, the storage side of the of containerization under Docker going. I think there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, I think over time we're going to see specialized solutions for different uses of data. Data is such a big word, you know, yeah. it's like computing. Um, so, just like computing now is no longer considered one category, but it's mm -hmm. specialized, I think data will be the same. Uh, and I think it's a great fit for this modular Lego approach to the Docker ecosystem, right? Yeah. So we're going to see different approaches to different data models, and I think we're going to see a lot of modularization and a lot of different assemblies and again, I think it'll a lot of that will happen in Mobi, and we'll see a lot of cool open stuff. We yes. ourselves are facing a lot of data-related uh, questions and requests for customers. There's stuff in there already. You've got data volumes, right? Um, and, and I think you're going to see a lot more on the data topic in, in the next year. Yeah, like containerization of artificial intelligence and deep learning and all that. Clearly that's terra yeah. incognita so far because, yeah. I, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, really cool machine learning use cases using Docker already. OpenAI is all on Docker. Uh, we, we watch what they're doing really? with great interest. Are you and, a member of that consortium? Uh, I'm, uh, let's say, friends and family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, so OpenAI came out of the Y Combinator right. ecosystem and Docker is a Y Combinator company, yeah, so we spend sense. a lot of time with them. Uh, I think AI on Docker is a really cool use case. I'm a big fan of that. Cool. All right, let's do it. Uh, yeah, so Solomon, uh, you know, unfortunately we're, we're running low on time. Uh, last question I have for you is, certain, there's so many things we can do with Docker now, and I saw like, you know, here's a bunch of the use cases, it's like, oh, I can run lots of applications. I mean, everything from Oracle's in the store now, things like that. You know, what is the, you know, kind of quick win when you're talking to customers when that gets started, what's the thing that gets them the most excited that impacts their business the fastest? <laughs> you know, it's it's, and it never comes down to one thing. But yeah, you know. it's, it's honestly, it's we keep talking about Lego. I think it's it's like asking what's your favorite Lego toy. I think we're maturing in the model. Yeah. We're, I think Lego is just the perfect analogy because it's a lot of building blocks. Yeah. And there's more and more, but there's also the the sets. Yeah. And so we're I think we're consolidating around a few different sets, yeah. and you know there's maybe a dozen main use cases, and we're seeing people identify with one and then we're helping them see a starting point there, like here's a starter set for your problem, and then it clicks. All right, you know. so, so, so yeah, I, I hear that and I can't help but think back, you're the big green platform that <laughs> all my Legos build on, so I can have my space stuff, I can have my farm set, uh, you know, maybe the Duplos don't quite fit on <laughs> it, but uh, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's the platform, you know, helping me to, to modernize a lot That's of what right. we're doing. Nice. All right, Solomon Hikes, always a pleasure to catch up. Congratulations on, on all the progress here, and we look forward to catching up with you the next time we connect. We'll be back, Jim and I will be back with lots more coverage here from DockerCon 2017. You're watching theCUBE.